Today it is our pleasure to have as our guest speaker a local retired businessman who operated his own construction firm for 35 years. And he is also still married to his high school sweetheart, Susie, and they've been married for, they've enjoyed that tenure for, uh, 50, for 53 years, the marital bliss. They have two children and five grandchildren. He has always been interested in local history and has written two books on local gold mining, and they are the Lone Jack and Dreams of Gold, which I have read and I would highly recommend to you to read. They are available at Henderson's, the Village Bookstore, and many of the businesses along the Mount Baker Highway. Um, his latest book, The Grand Lady of Mount Baker, which you've seen up here, which is today's topic, will be available in approximately six to eight months. You're getting a review of a book that is not even published yet. So, let's put our hands together for our own local entrepreneur, author, and speaker, Mr. Mike Impero. Okay, we're going to talk about the Grand Lady of Mount Bakers. Back in the very first decade or two of the 1900s, there was a big move foot in, in the western part of the United States to build great lodges. And it was promoted by the railroads. And, and I'm sure some of you, most of you, have seen these lodges. Uh, Yellowstone, uh, Mount Hood, uh, Paradise, all these beautiful lodges. And they were usually accessible by train. And of course, up here, where this one was built, there was no train. Uh, just briefly right now, the hotel had 100 rooms. It was set up for 350 guests. It could seat about 100 for dinner, and it was equal to any of the others, okay? And one of the reasons I'm so interested in this history is having been in the construction business, I, my company built the Alaska Ferry Terminal, and we had nowhere near enough time to build a building, but the ferry was coming, and if you remember, the ferry came on the day it was supposed to come. And so I can really sympathize, but this is much more difficult for what they went through. So I'm going to sit down here and we'll run through some pictures. <clears throat> okay, now the area, and I assume everybody in this room has been to Heather Meadows. Uh, originally, it was not named Heather Meadows, it was called Shuxton Meadows. And, and prior to about 1885 was the first exploration up in that valley. And, and, but this was the first one that was really recorded. And there's a pass up there today and it's called Austin Pass. Originally, it was called Wild Goose Pass. And, and and Wild Goose Pass, or Austin Pass, is on the ridge between uh, Mount Baker and Mount Shuction. And I believe there was ski runs and what have you, which identified as the Austin run. But here is, is the first real recorded discovery up there, uh, May the 1st, uh, uh, 1893, elevation 4850, and it was discovered by B.A. Banning Austin. A little history on Banning Austin, they homesteaded his family down on Lake Waco. He, the family then sold the farm to uh, Bill Corning, and that's where Sun Valley is today. And that barn that's down there is the original Austin barn. So he was the first person up, uh, up in the area to really establish it. And right away, people started to flock up there and they started to realize the beauty that was up there. And, and these pictures that I'm gonna show, they're by a variety of photographers. Uh, this is taken from Artist Point right at uh, the east side of Mount Baker. And, and one of the ironic things, before I forget to mention it, when they built the uh, Mount Baker Lodge, people would come storming up the road and they would look at Mount Shuxon and they would say, well, what a beautiful Mount Baker. <laughs> and they would realize and be told that they're not even looking at the right mountain. And then they would say, well, where is the mountain? 
and they would be told that it was over the other mountain and you can't see it. <laughs> and that just early on disturbed in a lot of complaints. Now this is one of the photos by uh, Huntoon, and Huntoon was, we'll get into him later, but he was the greatest promoter of all of this. He was an engineer, and he is the man that really pushed and created all of this. And this is a very early photo of his. You can see this is Sunrise Lake, and the road around the other side hasn't even been built going on up to Artis Point. And these are hand-touched, uh, hand-painted photos from black and white. This is up uh, right at the picnic area, and this is Terminal Lake and Table Mountain in the background. And some of you will remember, you remember about 40 years ago, the slush, was it called the slush cup? Yeah. Yeah. And they got all intoxicated and tried to ski across <laughs> this a little lake. Just another hand-painted photo. Now this is Huntoon. Huntoon worked for the PAF, but he, he was back in very early trying to, he was paid by the Olympia Highway Commission, trying to find a wagon train, wagon road to the east. Uh, and, and they wanted it north of Mount Baker. Well, he, he and many others tried to find a route. They couldn't find a route. The people in Olympia and in Eastern Washington thought they were a bunch of pansies. Uh, but these guys were right. There really was not a group. But this, he is an engineer, surveyor, uh, very, very colorful guy. And this is his sidekick. This guy's name is Charlie Hunland. And he was uh, the main man that lived up at the lodge all the way through the construction. Uh, another engineer, very interesting man. Now, in the very beginning, a group of guys from Bellingham, there's about six of them, I can't remember them all. J.J. Uh, Donovan was one of them. Uh, Denning from the PAF was one of them. Uh, the, the publisher of the Bellingham Herald was another. And they, they took on the challenge of trying to build this remote lodge up in Heather Meadows. So the first thing that had to happen, they had to apply to the Forest Service to get a permit to do it, to do it. And the problem was hardly anyone from the Forest Service had ever been in the area. They didn't even really know where to work. So this picture shows a very early picture of Huntoon, the far guy on the left, and, and a bunch of people from the Forest Service, and they're up there surveying the site. And this is their first camp up there. Uh, that's Mount Herman in the background. This camp is about exactly where the maintenance building is of the uh, current uh, uh, company up there. And, and right up in there, there's a huge, huge parking lot behind it. That used to be the most beautiful alpine area with beautiful little lakes all over. Uh, we made it into a parking lot. Uh, but uh, this is where the original camp was. And, and the problem was uh, they, they moved up there just as soon as they could. And there, as you can see, there's still snow and, and uh, they're trying to establish a camp. And one objective that this group of people had was that they were trying to determine really if the public really wanted to have this area opened up. Did they really want to see this Alpine country? Did they want to lodge? And so right away, in about 1922, they started opening a summer camp up there. And this is the camp. Now the previous picture is in the spring. This picture is now in the fall. And this is probably about the uh, first week of October or so. And they had it. about 20 tents they set up. And they set up the camp. And uh, they, were, they were checking out the tourists. Well, it was overwhelming how many people flooded the area right away. And so they, they came back with a very good feeling. So this group of guys, it was all men, they established the Mount Baker Development Company. And uh, it was local people, local men, and they had the permit from the Forest Service to, to build the lodge. Now, one of 
the problems it had. The road going up there wasn't too good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the road between Maple Falls and Glacier. And to the right is a steam train coming down the BBC Railroad coming down from Glacier. So right away we have a little problem with uh, transportation. This is another picture of the road. This is up above Glacier and it's on the Dead Horse Road today. But uh, that's, that's again the condition of the road. Now this is 1924 and in 1921 the road got to Shopson. So this is 1924 picture. It's Huntoon on the left and it's Charlie Bourne on the right. Uh, Charlie Bourne had a very famous son named Jerry Bourne. Have yeah. you ever heard of Jerry Bourne? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he's my main character in my book. <laughs> and the original road up there was eight feet wide with turnouts, they said. And in most cases, there was no surfacing of any kind, no crushed rock, of course, asphalt didn't exist. And at Shopson, there was actually a ghost where there was a town. And it was there because of uh, the gold mines and because mainly because of the Lone Jack. And so, so in 1921, the road came to there. Now, the next issue was they had to get the road built further. They had to get it up to, to the lodge site and, uh, and, and of course later to Artist Point. So Huntoon and met with the Forest Service, Bureau of Public Roads, and they said, yes, uh, if you can get Watkin County to provide their share of the funding, uh, we will build you a road. You must guarantee that you'll build the hotel and we will pay two thirds of the cost. Watkins County had to pay one third. Now at that time there was three county commissioners. I think one of them obviously was out in the Linden area. And all of a sudden it became a big debate. Why should we waste money building a road up into those mountains? When we've got roads out around Linden, that part of the year you can't even drive on. And it went on and on for about six months. Finally the commissioners had a vote and it won three to two. So it proceeded with the road. So for every federal dollar, Watkins County paid one, and then Watkins County had to put up the funds for the maintenance for the upcoming year. At Shopson, in later years, at about the time the lodge was starting to be built, there was a facility there. It was called uh, the Shopson Inn. And it had a campground, it had this building, this had a restaurant, rooms, and, and uh, it, it was pretty modern. This is a very interesting situation. There was an old gentleman that homesteaded up there and fought the federal government for years and years, about 15 years, trying to recognize his homestead. And he finally got the homestead due to being a Civil War veteran. Uh, and that piece of land, that 160 acres of land, provided the bulk of all the lumber that went into the lodge. Uh, right off this uh, spot, and it's right there where the, the uh, highway snow removal equipment is. And one of the issues, I'm sorry to call you pictures so bad, but one of the issues here and at the lodge, that every, everybody became friendly with the bears, and the bears became very friendly. And the bears would go right in the cabins, shut the door in and go in, people are in the bed and we have to So they, they had a problem and they had a point to know what to do with it. Now I wish you could see this picture better. This is the top of Power Plant Hill and and off to the right is, is the vertical cliff. And that, of course the cliff is there today and it's very recognizable. But what you really got to look at is the amount of forest fires and I'm going to show you about three or four pictures now. The whole area has been burnt. Now here's one a little further up the road. Yes. And you can see uh, you can, everything is just burnt off. And down in that drainage right there is a major stream. I don't think it's the Nooksack, but it's one of the major streams. And you can still see there's no silt fences or anything. And you can see, see all the material they're shoving. 
is just going right down into the prayer. Yeah. Couldn't get aware of that today yeah. at all. But notice how badly it is burned. Now this, of course, had nothing to do with the lodge. And so in 1925, the road is being almost completed to the lodge site. And this is the first vehicle, private vehicle, that was able to, dr to drive to that site. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, everything came in by pack animals or later by horse and wagon. We're starting to build the lodge right now, and in the front picture, you will see that star drilling. And the guy sitting down has got a, a, a steel bit, rock bit in his hand, and there's two men there with sledgehammers. And what they're doing is they alternate hitting the drill, then he turns it, they hit it, they turn it, and away it goes. Now you have to make sure you're good friends. <laughs> and if the guy slinging the hammer didn't get totally bombed last night or something. <laughs> but you can see behind uh, what they're doing, they're starting to blast off and create a level spot. Again, this is in the fall of 1925. Now this is 1926, and uh, the lodge is starting to take shape. And this is the first picture of a logging truck on the Mount Baker Highway that I could be the oldest. And what's weird is, of course, the logging truck is going uphill. Uh, these, these poles came from down at Shepson, I'm sure. And that pole is 70 feet long, and that's going to be part of the observation tower in the end of the building. Now, when you go up to the lodge today, and you're going past uh, Pitcher Lake, and the road makes a sharp switch back, and you can see the buildings right above you. Yeah. This corner is right here, and the building is being built right where the current one is. And again, there's the corner that I'm talking about, and there's the observation poles on the left, see for 70 feet tall. Uh, interesting, really interesting uh, note right here. To the right of the road, there's a little dip in the land, and that's where they put their septic tank for that whole facility, was right there. But then the outfall came under the road and went into Pitcher Lake. <laughs> I don't know the quality of Pitcher Lake's water at that time. So now we're looking at the front of the building and it's starting to take shape. And this little lake is called Sunrise Lake. It still exists there today. Unfortunately, it's being kind of filled in. The highway department uh, is pushing snow and debris into it over here. Uh, it's, not, it's not what it was. But anyway, in this picture, you can start to see the construction. This is now midsummer 1926. So keep in mind, when they got there in 1926, there was not one piece of wood in the air. There wasn't one piece of wood being used yet. And by this this time, you can see the progress is being made. The observation tower is off to the right, and right just to the left of the building, they're building the grand fireplace. And this fireplace <coughs> took a 10-foot log, and they would bring the logs in on a wagon, steel wagon, roll them in and dump the roll of logs into the fire. So you can see the scaffolding right there. I'm so sorry that you can't see these pictures because they're really good. <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, this is the back side of the building and you can start to visualize the magnitude of how big it was. Uh, far to the left is about ground floor and project that across and you can see uh, they had a tremendous, I think these poles on the end here are 35, 40 feet tall. And in these pictures, you can count up to 20, 30 guys working on that roof. Tom Shepson is the background and it's got fresh snow. Snow's coming. Here's another picture of the building. And, and the building has got tremendous detail in it inside. I mean, you'll see some pictures of, of the architectural woodwork and stuff. It's Fabulous. Okay, here's a, another photo of it. Now, up at Heather Meadows, and when I get out there, 
you, you must realize they had nothing. They didn't have the road, they finally got the road. But they had no electrical, no telephone, no water, they had nothing. So they had to build their own powerhouse. And so down below the interpretive center at, at the lodge, there's two lakes there. One, they're, back, they're called Bagley Lakes. But originally there was only one, the upper one. Well, what they've done, they built a dam in it, uh, formed the second lake, built a powerhouse, and that's how they created their power. This is a picture of it today. Uh, the water goes under the dam now instead of over the dam. But you can walk right to this. It's right there off the parking lot. Nice water. And here's what it looked like before the lake was formed. Here's the powerhouse. They had three generators, and, and they'd only run one at a time. But they were DC power. They were not AC power. Uh, they had uh, cord or uh, the wires running up to the lodge, and I was told they were about three quarters of an inch in diameter of copper wires. Now this is a picture of the back of the lodge, and and at this point, the the fall is coming. We're coming into winter, and it's uh, getting late. But they've already got the landscaping and stuff. It, it, you can see the picture. There's trees and stuff all planted in there. In the, in the corner of the building. And one other thing that, I don't know why I'm using the point, there's a valley right here in the road. See it coming down? You see this road, see this road, see the valley? And they built this little structure right here. So I couldn't figure out what that was, but I'll show you. Now, this is winter time. <laughs> and the first winter they're there, they're still working inside the building. There's 40 to 60 guys working in the building. And at this point, of course, and in these days, nobody plowed the road out. There's no uh, state highway, Watkins County. Nobody did. So it was truly, when you're snowed in, you're snowed in. The snowshoes in and out destruction. Now what happened, they had no idea how much snow was going to come in Heather Meadows. They had no idea. There was measurements from Stevens Pass, so they based it on Stevens Pass snow. Mount Baker gets twice at Stevens Pass. Mm -hmm. So what's the building designed for? So here it is. Now, that little shed roof thing that I showed you is out in there. And I think all it was was a means to try to get the snow to go off the road. But start to realize what conditions they had. Mm -hmm. Now, in in the now this building was not built with all the, the ceiling processes that we have today. I'm not sure they even used tar breaker. People remember what tar breaker was, right? but uh, they may have. But in the in the winter, when the northeaster was blowing, like we have outside today, it's not cold. Uh, when it was blowing, the building it was all seated inside. It and it had a lot of air <laughs> penetration. They would, the, the snow on the, on the corridors upstairs would get two feet deep. <laughs> and they had to have a crew go up and shovel the snow constantly onto those floors because they're all oak floors and they knew it would ruin them. Again, the building was what we call tight. <laughs> now, this is a picture of, I'm gonna show you, keep in mind, this deck right here, that's the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> and what they did, they kept the uh, lights on and all the electric heat all went along. And of course the generators, were, the generator was running, producing the power, wasn't costing anything. And they were hoping that it would help melt the snow. Well, about halfway through the winter, they started to have a problem. They could hear roof beams cracking and settling and all kinds of problems. They had a meeting with the architect and the general contractor and Bert Huntoon, and uh, all the architect could do was shake his head. He said, I never dreamed of this kind of stuff. <laughs> so what they did, they ended up with a crew of about six guys all winter shoveling the snow off the roof. They'd go around the building, 
them right back around. Now, people say, well, how did they get stuff up here? Well, this little Fordson tractor right here with these tracks on it, makes it look like a cat or a bulldozer, was what they used in the sled. And they would haul stuff up there all winter long from Shopson with this tractor. Now, in this picture, you can see the snow is starting to melt. That little tractor is sitting right there now. And this picture is taken May 25th. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to open for the, they were going to open in uh, the 1st of June. But you see, they've got a little problem currently. When they did open, they had to, uh, uh, the Thursday before the Saturday opening, uh, they still couldn't drive to the lodge. They were still bringing everything in, uh, and, and no vehicles. They finally got cars there about one or two days before. So now here is the picture of the lodge. And you can just see, I would give anything to have a copy of the, if anybody here has got a copy of the floor plan of this building. I, I really like it. And I can't find it. I can't find it. Blight Plumbing and Heating did the plumbing. I've talked to uh, David Morris. He went through their archives and does not have it. There's a little lake out in front, at Sunrise Lake. This was an annex. We're looking at about 1928 right now. This is the annex building that we built. And this little building right here is the Stone Cabin. And it was built in 1923. And it was the first building up there. And it's still there today. Kind of neat you look at. So here is the lodge uh, about the time she opened. Well, no, not the time she opened. The snow's gone. Here's the big fireplace. At this point, you can drive under this part, the wing of the building. Right over here, I found a corner of the building. There was a steel dowel in flat rock, and I was told by the manager that was from the original building. And, and since then, this summer, they enlarged the parking lot to take them out. Okay, now, you're going to see something kind of neat here you're going to see what was the color of the lodge. They were all just hand-touched up paintings and, and probably the building was natural cedar. I'm sure it had the look of weathered cedar. That's what it should have had. Now, Huntoon did a tremendous amount of publicity to uh, promote this facility. One thing I forgot to say was their season was between 65 and 70 days a year. Just a hair over two months. That was their season. Labor Day weekend, they shut her down. There's no way you're going to make money, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, here is on July the 14th, 1927, there's the opening banquet. Now we're inside. Here is that grand uh, fireplace. The fireplace is right in the middle of the picture. Uh, over here is a big elk, a big moose. See the fire prevention system right there? <laughs> <laughs> Who remembers those? We had them in trade school, remember? <laughs> they were, I don't know if they were worked. Uh, the floor in here was all oak, polished floor. They, they danced on that floor. Here is a color picture, and the whole interior was finished in Indian decor. And it wasn't local, it was plain, plain Indian. Uh, to the right, you can see a polar bear fur, and to the right, you can see a piano and a drum. They had live entertainment, dances, uh, they brought in all kinds of entertainment. Here is looking the length of it again. Here you can start to see some of the, the work that they, they did on all that interior work. Uh, and out in this area, straight ahead, back under there, that was a coffee shop. And uh, I'll just say that when this lodge burned, it burned, totally destroyed everything. But here's a chandelier from over in this area. And, and how that came to be, there was about a dozen cabins up there. And they had an extra one. And so this chandelier was put in the attic of one of these cabins. 
and today it has been converted to AC power and it's in a house in Glacier. Here's the letterhead of the launch. Uh, here is the menu. And you'd be surprised, 1927, uh, the menu's pretty close to what we eat today. Not <laughs> much different, really. Prime rib, uh, oysters. Yeah. Okay, now here is the dining room. <coughs> and again, they had all kinds of different groups coming up. And here is some of the china. And uh, there is some pieces that exist. I actually, I don't own these, but I own a little creamer. But now here's the dining room, and this is all women. Some type of a woman, women's organization. Republican women's. <laughs> could be the Republican women's group. It could be. Uh, and here's looking straight out the front window looking at uh, Montrose. Here's a, a, a bedroom. Uh, now what you've got to see here is, uh, uh, here's the air conditioner. <laughs> here's the phone. Uh, there's the bath. Now I know that they had plaster in the building, so I assume the bathrooms were plastered. The floor is, is oak. And I want you to pay particular attention to this area right here. Right here. And that was one style of, of a bedroom, and this is another style. This is uh, with fireplace. It was about a dozen rooms that had their own fireplaces. Uh, there's the air conditioner. Now, if you notice, different foam, different kind of foam. Okay. This was the front, and you remember I talked about the snow level up to there? Now, one of the things that they had to do very quickly, and I'm sure they found out the hard way, when they closed the building for the winter, they had to board up the windows. And I assumed that they would board up everything below this elevation down. I have a picture at home showing them taking the boards off in April. But if they didn't, the pressure of the snow would just pop all the windows right on. Now, there was plenty of, of tour buses and, of course, and, and the company, Mount Baker Development Company, they uh, bought a local uh, stage line out of Glacier, so they had their own buses, and they actually were connected with uh, Seattle, and buses came from Seattle. Here is a picture of the front of the building. They're in the telescope, they're looking at Mount Shepson. The hotel was really high class, and uh, when the highway was being built, they, uh, they wouldn't let the construction people come over to the hotel and drink, right? They didn't want to live there. They were low class. But the strange thing was, when the hotel burnt, all those construction workers came to help fight the fire. I found that to be kind of interesting. But again, it's all rustic wood. Now again, they had all kinds of bear problems, and they, they were way too friendly to the bears, and the, and the bear would go right in the kitchen here, just go right in, you know. The door was open, he'd walk right on in and try to help himself. So there was never any violence that I ever read about. But I know back in the early 50s, when I used to go up there with my parents, there was all kinds of bears still up there. Now, there anybody else remember those bears up there? There's still, still bears. Huh? There's still bears. Yeah, but I mean, they were right in the trees around the head. Yeah, no, here. And here's a picture, a very poor picture, but it tells a story. Uh, bears do eat garbage. And they had all kinds, how am I doing for time? Uh, they had all kinds of activity, and one of them was mountain climbing. The fellow on the left is, is Carl Steiner from Glacier, and he became one of the head guys. To the right is the annex building, the lodge would be to the left. And here they are up on Mount Baker. Uh, this is the crater on Mount Baker. Doesn't look much different today. And Huntoon, promoted photography up there so much and he was a great, great photographer. I'm going to show you some pictures. This horse is called Pinto and it was a horse owned by Charlie Bourne and the horse mainly was a pack horse but the horse was really cooperative to get his picture taken. There, see the horse on the left? Reflection in the water. I hope you can see it. 
there she is again. And, and there's a woman in these pictures, I'm sure it was a professional model or somebody's wife. The guy on the right is Charlie Hunter. Now, the horse said, I've had enough. I am not doing this anymore. <laughs> so I don't know how they got the horse to move at this point. Now this is the most discouraging picture I've ever seen. <laughs> now the lodge right away didn't make any money. And it, it just how could it? There's no way the investment of five hundred thousand dollars, which I don't know what that would equate to today, fifty fifty million, I have no idea. But there's no way they could make any money. So Deming, who was the president of the company, Mobic Development, he says we got to promote stuff up there, so I'm going to donate a golf course. <laughs> so here's the golf course. Now, the lodge is over there. Sunrise Lake is right there. This used to be all beautiful heather and trees. Now you sit over here on the deck, and you look out, and you're looking at it. <laughs> you guys agree with me on this? <laughs> That was desperate, that's a good word. <laughs> they, they, and they, they, uh, they would swim in these alpine lakes and, and the temperature would usually you never get above 40. Yeah. And I think some of these pictures were staged for commercial reasons. Now, a ways away were uh, chain lakes. And originally they wanted to build a lodge in here. Forest Service turned them down and they never pursued this any further. Everything started at the Leopold Hotel. Their office was in the Leopold Hotel, and that's where the, their, all their bookings and everything. And there are two of the lodges. Now, a woman came to a uh, talk recently, and she says, my dad drove on those buses. I said, oh, that's great. She said, it had a dent in the left side wall. See that down? Yeah. She sure that's dad's car. <laughs> this is a good picture because it shows the buses, the motorcycle, and the car. And so that was, uh, and, and that building to the right is the annex. The annex had 28 rooms, and it was built. To, they, they felt the need was there, so they built. Now that little bulldozer that I talked about. Now the facilities in use. And here's the same guy driving it. And he's got six women he's hauling around. <laughs> I don't know how they got up and on it. I don't have any idea. Uh, kind of ironic, but I'm positive I have this tractor. I think it, no, seriously, it came from the lodge to Maple Falls where my grandfather lived. And it's, there, there wasn't that many of them. Very rare. Yeah. OK, now across the road is another building. This is called. Uh, no, Heather Inn, Heather Inn. And this was actually built before the lodge and before the road. Similar construction. That's what it looked like. Uh, and this building existed into the early 50s. Anybody here remember this building? Do you? Long time ago. Okay, start thinking about what you're going to tell me. <laughs> One thing. And one reason I do these talks is because I'm always asking people if they've got information for me. And, and you'd be surprised what you could. I have found three people now that have been in that lodge building, three. And here is a picture across the Sunrise Lake. The highway is built past now. And, and, and here's just another one. Now here's a, a, a booklet, a guest book, and here is the lodge, and the sunlight light. This is the cover of it, and here is people's writings in it. And if you read over in the right, and this book was in the Heather Inn, and if you read over in the right, what you read about is pie. <laughs> right there, Blanche of Pie, Hodge, 1928. The lady second from the left is Blanche she was a fabulous pie maker, apparently. Uh, and there was, and I'll run through these quick, they had about a dozen to 15 rental cabins, too, up there. 
And if you could see, these all have chicken wire on the windows, and that's not for bad people, that's for bad bears. <laughs> this is Cyrus Gates' cabin. I, I did not mention that Cyrus Gates was one of the owners, and uh, it, his was the nicest cabin. And there's Mr. Gates' cabin. Again, I apologize, these pictures are a lot better than that. And there was a ranger station up there. And uh, it was occupied, and then one night, the ranger and his wife went down to the lodge in the wintertime, and they came back up, hoping it burned down. This is the interpretive center up there today. It was built by the CCC boys. And here's that little hut I told you about. Here's a great time at the lodge. These, and they had about three of these. these were dug out Indian canoes and uh, very well built in there. Now the watch caught a fire at about 5 o'clock in the morning in August and it burnt completely to the ground in two hours. And the uh, Bert Huntoon, the great photographer, the great promoter, was out in the meadows taking pictures. And he turned around and he ran uh, to get there to turn the fire alarm and to get everybody out of the building. There was only about 40 people in the building at the time of the fire, uh, 40 guests. The, the hotel had about 80 employees. Barbershop, they had everything. And they had tested their fire system over and over again, and they were trained on how to do it, and they performed marvelous. Everything worked. They had up to uh, two-inch fire hoses, and the water did nothing. <laughs> Didn't even slow it down. Keep in mind, everything was seared. It was just, it was just a, a unbelievable fire. Now, if some of you will know, if you know where Bell Creek is, Bell Creek is right up from Welcome, yeah. the next creek, okay? And right there, I talked to one of these ladies that had been in this lodge. She was just a little girl, and she lived there. And she was, uh, they were out in their yard, they were out in the field playing. And all of a sudden, these little pieces of cinder were coming out of the sky. And so they caught them in their hand, and they took them in and showed them to the mother. And the mother said, oh, it's got to be a forest fire burning again someplace. Well, the dad came home, and he said, yeah, forest fire. The next day, they found out it was a lodge. Now, when you realize it's about 30 straight air miles away, and that air current took that all that way. Uh, they're, they're just unbelievable, the reports of the heat. Uh, uh, the trees were singed for thousands, not thousands of feet, but hundreds of yards away, the trees were always there. And here's the culprit right here. DC power, mm -hmm. and I don't, there's probably an electrical engineer in this room that knows everything that I don't know, but, but apparently uh, DC power fluctuates up and down, up and down, and with that, when it fluctuates high, it's creating a lot of heat. Anyway, they had had two previous electric heater fires in the building, and uh, they put them out, and they didn't worry about it. Well, they, everybody said it was electric. Here's a uh, telegram of Forest Service about the building burning down. Here's the fireplace. Here's the end of the road at, at uh, the Interpretive Center. Now look at this picture really close, and you'll see the beauty of the building and the bus. And now this is the great-granddaughter of the grand lady. This is the new lodge up there that took about two years ago. It's called Raven Inn. And what I love about this picture, now you saw in the other one the old bus, we got a snowmobile here. <laughs> <laughs> we also have electric coils in the sidewalks melting all the snow. <laughs> That's it. Six, all the assets of the Mount Baker Development Company were sold 
church sale, bankruptcy sale. So people ask, well, what happened to it? Well, that's what happened. Very good. Excellent program. Normally we'd like to have lots of time for questions, but we only have just a couple minutes. One thing I would add is, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but Oregon State University puts out a, um, a, a, a conversion table for dollars. And if I did it correctly, the, um, the dollars would have been $6.7 million. From a half a million. From a half a million. Yeah. That's wow. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, they have insurance? Uh, they had insurance. They had $129,000. <laughs> but you know, when you're talking about a half a million dollars, but you know, they had to build the power out. They had to build the dam. They had to build the water system. All of that. Well, the fire burned, but it didn't destroy that stuff. But of course, without the building, what have you got? You don't have anything. A couple of quick questions. Sure. Yes. Um, I was told a story about you, Mike, that you found a touring car in a, a bunch of overgrowth, a long, old-fashioned type touring bus or car or something. I can tell from the look on your face it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it to be true. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, I, I don't. Wayne, I don't Beach, Wayne Beach told me. That. Well, Wayne Beach would know. Wayne Beach would know. Yeah. Why did it? Last question. Yeah. Well, how about a big round of applause? For you? <laughs> you know, there's still no electrical power that runs to Mount Baker. They generate all of their own power in the ski area by burning diesel for the uh, for the chairlifts. The Forest Service has never allowed uh, electricity to come to the uh, ski area. So the lodges and all of that sort of stuff are still generating their own power, no longer um, hydroelectric to my knowledge. I think it's not now all fossil fuel coming from the burning. That powerhouse ran until about 1951. So there's no supply of power. Yeah. Yes, and at a point, they ran that power up to Shotgun, but it never got ran up to ski area. <coughs> Any other questions, please? Well, yes, sir. how difficult was the permitting process? <laughs> <laughs> That's $4 million today. <laughs> $40 million today. Uh, is this back on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It's what Whatcom County probably was when I started the business. Yes. Yeah. It, was, it was the way it was supposed to be. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can say that. I'm not in business anymore. They can't do anything to me. I would have never said that if I was still trying to get a building again. But it, it was uh, very easy. I mean, uh, it took about, from the time they made a written application, about two weeks. <laughs> and uh, oh. they had the permit, and then they originally they were going to have five acres of land, and then they went up to 65 acres, and each time they had to apply and they went up. It, they, and I'm sure the ski area is on the lease today because it was in it is, it's government owned land, of course. Okay, thanks again. Thank you. We're adjourned. Our next month is the debate between Senator Erickson and his opponent. Look forward to seeing you all next month.